We've had stuff stolen from the campground, not once, but twice. You need a camera security system in your RV. Welcome to the channel, I'm Liz. And I'm Paul, and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, you definitely need to push past fear these days because campground theft is getting pretty common. We've yeah. been out here on the road for two and a half years, two and a half years, as a year and a half together and one year solo. Right. And in the last year and a half, we've had two campground thefts. We have lost $10,000, over $10,000 worth of stuff. If you haven't seen our videos about that, we'll put a link below. This video is about our answer to it. Now there's more than one answer, but we have just come to the point where cameras are the answer. I was hoping that we could get by without them because it's a big investment, but you know, out, like Liz said, after two major grand thefts, mm -hmm. I mean, it, this falls into the grand theft category. But it's worth it, you know, this is your home. When you think about that, I mean, that's something that, you know, that it, it's not just having stuff stolen outside that we have had, but someone could break in and take your stuff yeah, inside. Yeah, right, yes, you gotta consider that. I think if you're full time, you definitely need this because you have everything. I mean, you have your computers and your, you know, all your electronics in here. Yep. And yeah. there, these you, no matter what kind of security you put on the door, somebody can break it. Oh, those doors would be easy to get through. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, another reason why I love the idea of cameras is just having them on the outside is a deterrent. It's a theft deterrent. It is. I mean, it's like, you know, just having a this home protected by some such and such security sign out in your front yard makes, you know, criminals think twice about getting your house as opposed to the neighbors so and so we wanted to make this video to really give you a lot of answers because you're going to have questions we went through a long process of how many cameras do we need where do we put them what right. kind of system wireless or wired so we're going to do a deeper dive and that's why this video yeah. is coming out today because it's something that takes a little bit of planning and we're gonna do some of that research for you to make it easier on you. And as you probably know, but if you don't, we've partnered with Super Circuits. They are the best game in town. They've been in business for 30 years. They're a commercial security system. We're not talking putting plastic cameras on your rig. You've got nice rigs, some of you, and you don't wanna have something falling apart as you drive down the road. Yeah, you gotta keep that in mind that you're driving these things down the highway. They're not just sitting up in your eaves at home and I mean if you if you want a system for your home these will work we're mainly talking about putting the system on on a moving object an RV so you need something high quality you need something that looks good it's not gonna like fade in the Sun um, and you also want to work with a company that you feel good about and we feel good about super circuits yep. and we had to utilize their technical support um, at the final stage of getting them set up so we could see them from remote locations. And it's an American-based technical support team. They're, they're very helpful. They speak English, which is really important <laughs> yeah. as their first language. I mean, yeah. that's really important that's for them. It's not a given anymore when you call most technical support lines, you're, you're calling overseas. So. You're already frustrated and then you have a language barrier. Yeah. Also, one of the things about the system we have is that there is an app on the phone. So this allows you to check your campsite when you're gone somewhere and it also allows you to set up a perimeter. So if somebody steps into your boundary, steps into yeah. your campsite, yeah. you'll get an alert on your phone right away. Hey, somebody's in your campsite. Yep. In a lot of campsites, everybody is so close. You'd probably want to turn that off you'd be getting dinged well, all the time well no that's what's so cool about it is if you are in a campground where people are close by instead of having it at 30 feet you may set that perimeter to 15 feet oh yeah yeah, yeah just move it in yeah yeah it's it's really a wonderful system and we actually used it yesterday because we were 40 minutes away yeah yeah we'd driven into the the, the big city near us and and uh we wanted to see if it was raining back at the rig because it was raining where we were about 30 miles away. <laughs> we could tell that it was not and we could also tell that we were getting a new neighbor right next to us. Yeah, like we could yeah. watch them pull in. Yeah, we watched them back in. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first questions you'll ask is wired or wireless? Yes. So when I started researching this camera, whole camera issue, I, I found out that there are really three different types, three different systems 
to power the camera. There is wired, which is what we have. You run Cat5 cable to the camera. There is wireless. That is still requires a 12-volt power source to the camera. And then there is... <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You keep going. <laughs> Don't do that. And then there's wire-free. And then there's wire-free. Wire-free means that it's just like the wireless. It's Wi-Fi to the, to the cloud but it is also powered by batteries, so you don't have to run a power source to it. But then you're having to replace those batteries. Yeah, you and, know. and if you're gonna run, we run our cameras 24 seven. And if you did that with a, with a um, wire free camera, you're gonna be replacing the batteries probably monthly. You have to have internet and that's the key. So if your camper is stationary and you have good internet, it will work. But if the internet goes out, you have no security. Yep. Right. Yep. If something happens while the internet is out, you've missed it. Yeah. yeah. So if you travel with a, an RV, as you probably know, we're full timers. We've been on the road for three years. But even if you go on the weekend, if you go out in the woods or the mountains or whatever, and there's no internet, we recommend wired. So that's another consideration. Do you want them on all the time? They can be set to only go on when there's an event, like for people mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. that kind of thing. We chose to have them on all the time. We're often in places where the wind blows and there's trees, you know, and there's neighbors anyway. So we're like, let's just leave them on all the time because these go to a hard drive and yeah. we have like at least seven days. We chose a big enough hard drive. Yeah. So one of the things actually that we should mention is that when you get down to deciding what you want for your camper, Super Circuits has a great tech support. You can call into the sales line and they'll help you figure out how much you need, yeah. you know, because everyone's going to be different, you know, depending on where you are, you know, how often you move, that kind of thing, what your rig is like, you're going to want to have a custom system. And that's what we love about Super Circuit so much. They will direct you through the process and get you just the stuff you need and, and not sell you extra stuff. We also want to thank Chris Dalton again, who helped us so much in deciding on the system. He's an A-team member. We love the A-team. Yeah, yeah, yay A-team. Because one of the other things that we really struggled with was how do we put the cameras out there? Where do we put them? You know, if you put cameras at a house, they're always up high. They're right. under the eaves. Yeah. And as a photographer, I mean, I can visualize how these cameras are seeing. And I kept telling Paul, well, if we have them on the roof, you know, we have a fifth wheel. So we have that. And I said, yeah. you know, we're going to have a massive blind spot with this nose of the fifth wheel, the front end cap. We're not going to be able to see in the front. And our first bike theft, we had two e-bikes. They were locked up. Yep. Someone came in on the front yep. and unlocked them. Cut the lock. Cut the lock. Yeah, yeah. he not unlocked them. He cut the lock. So we were like... You know, we need to have that front coverage. We And we couldn't see how the cameras could see over that if they were on the roof. And the other problem with the roof installation was what? Running the cable. Because these things are wired and they, I have to run Cat5 to each camera. And through the attic. We're like, we don't want to be going yeah. through our attic and our I'm, roof. I'm and trying to figure out how I'm, how I'm going to uh, pull cable through the, through the roof. And I sort of figured out a, a method that I thought might work, but I never, luckily I never had to try it. Because this is where Chris Dalton comes in. So Chris Dalton has a system from Super Circuits and he said, you really just only get the tops of the heads if the camera's up there, he said the best thing is to put them down low. It makes the install super easy. You're seeing well, their face. I wouldn't say super easy, but. <laughs> I didn't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but it makes the install much easier. But here's the other thing. Those cameras are visible. They're not ugly cameras, but they're visible. Yep. They're such a theft deterrent and they're right there. Yep. As you're walking up to our door, you can't miss it. It's it's right there. Our cameras are low and they actually, we see more because they're low. We're, we see out instead of being up and trying to see down, we see out. And again, you can pick out where you want to put your cameras. This, sure. is, this is how Super Circuits yeah. will help you. But because they're not RVers, this was the key part that we got from Chris Dalton. We talked to Super Circuits about placement and, mm -hmm. and, and all that. And we were all thinking putting them high. And then Chris came in, came into the picture and said, no, put them down low. And it's like, Phew. Right. Well, 
Well, I mean, I'm sure some people are like, oh, someone can mess with the cameras. And well, you know what? There's We have four of them. We can see almost all the way around. If someone yeah. comes up to try and cover the cameras, you know, we're going to get an alert that somebody's there, you know, right. before they cover the camera where they're going to be on the screen. So it's going to take a lot of work. I mean, no system is 100% yeah. yeah. infallible. Yeah. It uh, involves running Cat5 cable to each camera. So there is some skill level that's going to be involved if you're going to do it yourself, but you could certainly hire somebody to put it in for you if you, uh, if you couldn't do it yourself. Yeah, it is a big job. We had help. Yeah, we actually did. Uh, Shout out to Karen and Carl. Yeah, thanks guys. It was, you, were, you were very helpful that day. So here's the downside of, of, of wired cameras. Running Cat5 cable from each camera to the, to the box. Well, actually speak the words that, 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 just, that you're still feeling bad about. What's that? Cutting a hole. Oh. <laughs> yes. So, you know, you may not oh, want to do man. it. You yeah. may not want to do it. We know yeah. we're increasing the value of our rig, but we, it was also... <sighs> it was, it was nerve-wracking to... Dr so, one of the cables, the, the main data cable that comes out of the camera is pretty pretty big so you need to put a bore a big hole in the side of the rv and in in the case of the system we used it was a seven eighths inch hole that i had to drill through the side of the rig four times and each you want to make sure you do it right the first time <laughs> <laughs> no room for error yeah, no. and you got to think about what's on the other side you know are you drilling into plumbing and you know both side cameras are around things that you wouldn't want to drill into or through. So you definitely want to do your research. We are so grateful that we had help. We hadn't planned on having help. Uh, Karen and Carl right. offered, and oh, it ended up really. Yeah, they were. It's it's really good to have another technical. Even though I'm a, a tech guy, it it's really good to have somebody there with you who's also got the same skill set. And and uh, and you can bounce ideas, and, like, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, or or someone can be inside. You're drilling from the outside. Someone can be inside watching and saying, "Okay, you're through." Yeah. Now, right. yep. yeah. This, yep. this is not something that you take lightly, you know. And as Paul mentioned, you may just want to hire it out. Yeah, and have you somebody might. Do it, it. It's 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 obviously doable. It's uh, you know, it's something that it took me a day, uh, a solid day, to get it all wired up. You also want to think about where you want to have the, uh, the monitor to see these yeah, images, yeah. right? So we don't use our bedroom TV, but even if we did, we could have still well, done we it. We still use it. Yeah, yeah. we yeah, can still use a, it as a TV. You just yeah. change the you source. You just change the source. We yeah. thought the bedroom, because if we hear a noise in the middle of the night, we can turn that TV on and we can watch. Yep. We actually leave it on all day on the camera so we can just kind of look and yep. check and yep. see. Yep. Um, of course, there's the phone app. So we can use that right. whenever we're not here. Super Circuits actually sells a monitor that, that um, you can certainly get and use. <laughs> this is something you may not want to do in the install because it was pretty traumatic. Yeah, it was, it was harder than I thought it was going to be. I'd never dropped that coroplast, that, that plastic cardboard that's under your under most rigs nowadays. The belly pan. So if you buy a newer rig, instead of seeing all the the workings bare, they put this lining mm -hmm. and they insulate it so that you're more four seasons. Yep. yep. And Paul dropped the belly pan. <sighs> the control head for the system is in our bedroom, which is at the, the nose of the of the fifth wheel. We've got a camera at the very back. So I have to run Cat5 cable from one end to the other. And to do it cleanly, I wanted to go up into the belly. And I dropped the belly pan. And it's back up and, you know, no, no damage, but man, it do was, you, I would you, not recommend it. Yeah, I was gonna say, you do not recommend it. Now, my idea was just to run the cable under it and tape it like with roof tape, yeah. with using a turnabond. Um, you can just run tape on it. W would that work? Yeah, that would work. In retrospect, what I would do is they, they have these little stick-on pads that you can put a tie wrap into, and I would run those along the frame and just run the Cat5 and tie it every, every foot, or eh, probably not every foot, every, every two feet or so. If you're going to do wired systems, 
you're going to also have to learn how to terminate Cat5 cable. And there are four twisted pairs, and they're all color-coded, of course. You've got to get them in exact order. I mean, so they, they have to be exact. You can't have one that switches places and expect it to work. So, and that's the trick. Uh, when I was putting the the uh, the connector onto the uh, wire, the end wires kept swapping places. So all eight, they're all different colors, have to be lined up. They all have to go in at the same time. We highly recommend that you do like a meditation practice for <laughs> a couple weeks or a couple months or whatever before you do that because you definitely have to be in this place. Yes, yeah. yeah. You'll get better each time. Yeah. It's actually, it almost becomes fun. You know, it, it, uh, I had to do what, um, four cameras. So that's four times two is eight, 10 actually with the cable to the router. So another component of the system is the, the, uh, I think it's called the NVR. It's the box that records the information. Oh yeah. 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 So you'll want to make sure that you get enough memory. We chose two terabytes. That allows us to have these on 24 mm seven. -hmm. We don't have to worry about, you know, having them turn on for an incident or off. Just let them record. I mean, that's just our choice. And that allows us a week, you know, because mm -hmm. when our bikes got stolen, you know, we can't really pin that down. We're as close as we can come is probably 48 hours. And then the other thing is, you know, you may have a neighbor who has something stolen. And by the time they call the police and they start thinking about it, they may come over, well, hey, did your cameras catch anything? So you want at least two or three days. We feel comfortable with a week. After a week, it just starts recording over everything that happened previous week. It requires a hard wire from your router to the DVR. That was, those were the extra two. If you were wondering why four cameras and I said 10 connectors, that's why I had to terminate a Cat5 to carry the internet from the router to the DVR. Now you don't need internet with wired, except if you want to use the app on your phone. And if you want to be able to look at what's going on when you're not there, that's why you need it. So again, we have partnered with Super Circuits. They will help you absolutely call them so they can help you pick out your system. We do have a special discount for you, so be sure that you use our link. And let us know how you like the system, any questions you have. We are thrilled, and in fact, I told Paul, you know, we, we're thinking about getting another rig maybe in a year or two. I said, we definitely yeah, we, are gonna have cameras. We have to factor the cost of a security system into a new rig now, so it's, uh, yeah. From now on, yeah. we are gonna have cameras. We are never gonna be without cameras. It gives us such peace of mind, we know that it's a huge theft deterrent. Yeah, so let us know in the comments what you think of the system, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Yep, see you in the next video. Actually, we'll see you before you get there. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you coming. <laughs>